quite a shade of pale in 1967, which somehow reflected that uh, flower power period. They seem to have disappeared from England for ever-increasing periods. So when I met Keith Reed, that was the point I first made to him. Well, when, when Grand Hotel came out, we went to America and we did two, we did a three and a half week tour, I think it was, and we had a couple of weeks off and we did another three and a half week tour. And then we came back to England and then we, then we started, then we went to Australia and so on, so forth. Now, do you pick up an orchestra uh, in, in places or don't you play with an orchestra generally? Oh, no. I, we very, I mean, we, we hardly ever play with orchestras. I mean, it's only when we're invited to. In fact, we've played with an orchestra once this year, which was in Los Angeles at the Hollywood Bowl with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Uh, but that was the only concert that we did like that. Uh, the thing with playing with orchestras is just, it's a project. You know, it's just something we do, you know, usually people ask us to do it, they say, would you like to come along and play? And then, from then on, you know, you spend about three months planning it. I mean, a lot of work goes into it, just even just to do it for one night. Well, I thought one of the best things you ever did was the Live at Edmonton album, um, which was really, it really worked for me with an orchestra, whereas many people in pop or rock have tried uh, to combine themselves with an orchestra and it just didn't work. I mean, it sounded like two different units. Yes, well, I, you know, that, that's possibly, you know, why the thing that the things that we've done have worked because we haven't tried to combine what we do with orchestras. We've used them to uh, to add on to what we're doing, just as a, another facet of what we're doing, you know, just as extra weight and extra strength rather than modifying what we're doing. Well, and what about Pro Tool now? I mean, where, where does the future lie? Well, I mean, the next thing is with the, to record another album, which we, we start doing next month. And um, I, I expect that to, to be, you know, not substantially different from what we've done, but certainly, you know, something new. And have you written it already, the words? Yes, yes, I've written pretty much all of it now. And... Uh, you know, it's interesting to look at it when you've done when you've done it. Look at it, and then you, you see how things things do relate to each other. And do you um, have an appearance yourself this time? You, you're not the greatest uh, man for being forced on stage, but you did appear on the last show briefly. Well, a fleeting glimpse. Maybe there'll be a fleeting glimpse of me if you're quick enough to notice. And you've written it with uh, Gary. Yeah. With, yes, there will there will be collaborations between Gary and myself. Have you felt um, White Shade of Pale? Did you feel that it's a sort of albatross around your neck, or do you think you've rid yourself of it now? Well, I, I don't think it's, it's never been an albatross around our neck. I, we, we've always had it in perspective, you know. It's a big success, and that was really good, and uh, we benefited from the success of it, and uh, it didn't stop us developing and going on from there. And I think that people who, who really liked us, you know, who maybe heard A White Shade of Pale and then bought our first album and really liked that, are people who've stayed with us and gone on with us. So I don't I don't really think there have been any negative aspects of it, not really. I think, I don't think that you can say, I don't think that anyone could honestly say having a really successful record could, it, could be anything else, you know, except uh, something good, you know. I mean, the, the thing is that, that we wrote this song, it was our material, the people in the group played on the record. I mean, it was us, it, isn't, it wasn't an artificial thing, it was, you know, it was from us. I've always thought of your lyrics as um, very near poetry, if not poetry. Um, have you, do you look at them like that? Well, I look at it in this way, when I write a piece, it's a, a, a something that works on a piece of paper, and you read it, and it works for you. I mean, that isn't a definition of poetry. But, I mean, my things are written pieces, and they are written to be read. You can read them. And that's, that's about as far as I go with it. Are they written before uh, Gary adds the music? Well, they're, they're written uh, at a separate time. I mean, the way we usually work is whenever I have an idea, I, I work on it and finish it, and I give it to Gary. And uh, in the meantime, he may, you know, if he's had the opportunity, he's been working on melodies or, you know, chord progressions, so on and so forth. And uh, 
if he's got something, you know, he'll sit down, look at what I've given it, given to him, and see if it fits with anything that he's been doing. And and sometimes they do, and if not, you know, he'll write something specifically for the piece that I've written. So the pieces you've written for the new album uh, are interrelated. Well, what are they about? Well, there's a song about fresh fruit. Uh, I mean, what are you portraying on the album? Grand Hotel and where is it? Yeah. The Grand Hotel. Yeah. Uh, I think a song called New Lamps for Old, which is, you know, about somebody going over the edge, you know, the close of the picture, the end of the show. I've, I've done a song about, about, uh, about me, you know, writing, saying, uh, I've got out of bed, this, this is how I did it, and I, I thought I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'll go downstairs and write something. So I, I say in the song, I look, I've got a great idea, you know, I'm going to go downstairs, I'm going to be a poet, I've got a great idea, and I write a sonnet. A verse or two of Peerless Rose, uh, a quip or two to Gilded Rose, and then I say, uh, uh, my work will set the world alight, and so on. And, and then, I, then I carry on, and I think, oh no, I'm going to be a playwright. In no time at all, I'll be king of the stage. You know, the, the critics, you know, won't like my work, but they'll say that it's good. All the songs tend to be in a different way. You know, they're all sort of, you know, they're they're all kind of facets of me trying to express myself about so different things. You wouldn't ever be a playwright. Um, well, I, I don't think that I would. I mean, I would like very much to be, but I think that that the, the kind of I found a, a good avenue for expressing myself, you know, the form that I use, and uh, I can't see coming up against a, a block which would stop me from writing anything that I want to write. I don't visualize writing things that perhaps couldn't possibly be set to music. Do you have interest outside? Uh... I really enjoy music, and uh, you know any piece of music that I hear that I really like, you know, I buy and I listen to it. Or if it's a concert that's on, I go and hear it. Or then, well, so that's music, you know, that's one facet of life. But uh, I, you know, I'd be, I'm just as interested to uh, in, enjoy the work of a great, you know, film director as I am of a great rock and roll musician. Or, Know, a great painter or someone like that. You know, I'd go just as far and be just as excited about seeing something like that as Bob Dylan's new record. Do you think that in general people in uh, rock music industry are a bit too narrow? I find the people that I meet, the people who are the genuinely creative people in, in rock and roll, I uh, do usually have a broad range of outside interests. You know, they are interested. And I think that's usually why they are genuinely creative people. Who would you cast under that kind of met to come on? Oh, uh, Randy Newman. The Randy Newman you'd meet when you were in LA? Yeah. Is he no folk as well? Yeah, yes, he did. He, he, he was aware of it. He, he said that he liked it. What do you talk about when you meet somebody like that? I mean, you're a lyricist, he's a lyricist. Talk about it. You don't talk about music or anything like that. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, what would he ask about? You can meet people lots of times and not be able to have a kind of a normal conversation with them. Yeah.
I mean, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why, you know, there is so much emphasis on the, uh, on the, on the visual aspect of, of it all, you know. I mean, this is what people talk about more now, who's more outrageous, who did this more outrageous thing, you know. It requires very little genuine creativity from the people involved. I mean, you usually find that they're only aping or repeating people who used the same techniques and did the same thing, you know, a hundred times better. Keith Reed's opinions on the rock scene today, and I admire his work. Yeah, very nice. I wonder whether the anthem of the summer of 